Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have here an unsleeving or unbagging of C3I Magazine number 33. Um, this is the latest uh, C3I to be released at this exact moment. Uh, 34 is in the works, I can tell you that. Let's take her out of the bag. Um, see my unsleeving of C3I number 32 uh, back in the video history in the channel uh, for general comments on the magazine and that kind of stuff. So let's just look at the magazine first, and I'm sure lots of goodies are in here. Let's just look at it. So, alternative airborne landing locations for Holland 44. Um, as I mentioned in that other unboxing, I like Holland 44 a lot, so uh, it's always great to see new variants of that. Um, great on this. Usually a game, uh, in, in fact, for the last like eight issues or so, a game has been included in C3i, um, along with other various goodies, beside the articles. We'll get to that. Propaganda round number three, Stock and Flow in War Games, a Volko Runka article. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, wow. This gets... So, he's not just talking about coin here. Um, he's talking about how it works in Empires of the Middle Ages and Vok Dem Rhine and War and Peace and all that stuff. So, that's that's great. Uh, Won by the Sword. Supply Lines of the American Revolution, which is a pretty cool game from Hollenspiel, by the way. Uh, OCS. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is uh, looks like a very in-depth article. Always good to see. All right, so Behind Fields of Fire, a Ben Hull game. Uh, this is a solitaire game. There's two games in the series. Uh, one is, I think, 3rd Marines, and the other is Ninth Infantry Division. Um, and it uh, takes those as separate campaigns for, uh, in the case of Ninth Infantry, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And then the Marines is World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So uh, this, the games are pretty well regarded. I can tell you that. Uh, but I have no uh, experience with them, so I can't really comment on them other than that. Uh, okay, Roger McGowan Design T-shirt collection. would be cool to have. I think I have one of these, but not the... I, I have one with Roger's art on it, let me put it that way. Which I think is one of the GMT ones. These are different. Um, art posters, this is cool. If I had a real war room, I would totally, totally get in on that. Distilling history into its essence, or how to make Wargame Moonshine. This is Mark Herman's uh, column, Cleo's Corner, and here's a whole history of uh, that column, so that's cool. One of the things, though, typographically, um, so, I mean, the article starts here on page 24, this looks like a new article header, right? And it isn't. It's just a piece of art that happens to have been from South Pacific. Same thing with this for Plan Orange. So that's a bit visually confusing. Still in Cleo's Corner. Uh, yeah, Mark's taken this this article series very seriously because it's very in-depth. Uh, here's an article about war games. Um, about why to play war games if you're not like rah-rah war, I guess, which is, uh, it'd be interesting to read the article, see uh, the BPG opponent's view of it. Ooh, what's that? Okay, so I don't know what this is. Um, this is something to do with the game, the magazine game, Campaigns of 1777, which appeared in s and Magazine, I think, in 2018. Um... It, I haven't played it. I do own it. It is the best-looking magazine game ever released that I am aware of. Um, I don't know what this is. Could be an alternate scenario. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thoughts Designers Notes, a new scenario by Harold Buchanan Designer. Cool. Cool. The game looks good, uh, and it's well-regarded, and it's a uh, topic that Harold has done good work in in the past. So I'd like to get to it at some point. Uh, here is a Churchill variant. Okay. Having Henry Wallace, that's cool, by John Ziegler and Bernard Rosler. Uh, here is a Polymos variant for Pericles, which as I previously mentioned, Stuka Joe! Um, as I previously mentioned, I haven't really gotten into Pericles yet. There's a whole article about Stuka Joe, who uh, is, uh, of course, the, the, the patron saint of YouTube wargamers, and who is still... Uh, doing uh, better at it than any of us. 
Uh, here is a December 1941 variant. F Ooh, that's just interesting. Uh, for Empire of the Sun, uh, Operation Z Invasion of Hawaii. That's be interesting to see. Cool. All right, Invasion Hawaii. All right, so um, you see 1815 by Frederick Bay. So the previous issue had the Jour de Gloire tactical game for Issy in it. And I think this... Um, is some kind of campaign variant. I'm not sure how that works. But there's more counters in the issue. We'll get to the counter sheets and all the other goodies in a minute. All right, here's an SPQR scenario, Battle of the Po River, module designed by Dan Fournier. Virtually every issue of C3I has contained at least one, and sometimes more than that. Um, sometimes entire mini modules, like there's a Spartacus mini module, for example, uh, in an old issue of C3I. A lot of the, those scenarios for GBOH are available on the C3I Ops Center website. If you Google C3I Ops Center, you will you'll get it. Solitaire Tactics Methods for Playing Battles of the American Revolution. Uh, it's another game series. It's one of those... I, I do pretty well with playing a, a relatively large percentage of the games in my library, but this is one that I have not yet played by Joel Toppin. Uh, here's an interview with Ted Racer. Designer of a bunch of stuff, but Dark Sands, Paths of Glory, Dark Valley, uh, Clash of Giants, Reds, uh, Case Yellow. I have a lot of these. I don't actually own Dark Valley at the moment um, because I got rid of it in preparation for a new edition, which I have not yet bought. So here's a whole article about South Park referencing Twilight Struggle, which is weird but completely on brand for Star Trek. For for South Park. Star Trek? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, so here's the memorial article for Richard Berg uh, by Mark Herman. I, I really want to read this, too. Um, I liked Richard Berg was one of my favorite designers for a long time, and I'm not sure if that's still true, but it was it was I'm, I'm more aware of other designers now. Um, but I still want to read this. Um, a, a titan of the hobby has passed, and of course Chad Jensen passed away right around the same time, a very untimely death. Um, so we have a, an article by Roger about that, and we have some. Uh, weather limitations and a counter sheet manifest. We'll keep the counter sheet manifest handy because I might need it to tell what, what what's going on. So let's look at the goodies. All right. So the first thing we have is the Mark Herman Waterloo campaign, and right off the top, um, this looks similar to the um, Gettysburg game in the previous issue, but. Um, the, the book is a lot longer. Um, a lot of it's scenarios and designer's notes and stuff. And, and the illustrations are prodigious, too. So I don't, I'm reluctant to say this is much more complicated. Um, but the scale is very different than that. And we'll see when we look at the map. Uh, when we, then we look at that Waterloo game. Uh, between that and the Gettysburg game. Lombardi Studios launches on Kickstarter in January 2020. McGowan and Lombardi's The Great War is a new card game designed by Dana Lombardi, played tests and developed by, from 2019 to 2019, featuring Wargaming World Hall of Fame artist Roger McGowan's World War I illustrations. That's cool. Um, that being in the past now, I don't know anything about this, so I don't know if that went off or, or not, so who knows. Uh, but it's a little like postcard advertisement. I want to I want to do the counter sheet last. All right, we have the Empire of the Sun variant cards, uh, variant card for Churchill, variant card for Twilight Struggle. Uh, here's the ooh, okay. So it sounds like there are temporary counters here for. The Empire of the Sun 1941 variant in issue 33, which is this issue. So it sounds like some of the counters are bad, and these are the temporary replacements in that fully corrected counters will appear in the next issue. Uh, not, a, not a big fan, to be completely honest. But at least we've got new Empire of the Sun and Twilight Struggle stuff. Um... All right, so here's our SPQR scenario, the Battle of the Po River, 203 BC. Uh, Proconsular Army. 
and a Praetorian army. Interesting. So we have two. Um, we have a proconsul and what looks like a consul in uh, some Carthaginians. This would be uh, Second Punic War. One presumes. Yeah, it sounds good. All right, so here's uh, tactics tables, Battles of the American Revolutions. This is for that article. Nothing on the back there. Uh, we have stickers, labels for C3R collector boxes. Um, these are tiny, tiny stickers. If I box these games individually, maybe I'll have a use for these, but I don't at this exact moment. Uh, here is the Waterloo map, and ooh, to my somewhat surprise, this is a full-sized map. Yeah, so this is a vastly different scale than the Gettysburg game map. Um, it's The map is... Uh, four times the size, it looks like, and covers a big area, and therefore I think this is more of an operational thing, although the unit scale in the uh, Gettysburg game is, in fact, operational, but one of the reasons I have a, an interest issue with it is that uh, the scope of the game appears to be focused on the battle, and I think that's a, I think that's a mismatch. Uh, this looks like it might be more interesting. It doesn't hurt that I'm hot on the Napoleonic topic at this exact moment, though. Um, so we'll take, give that a look. Uh, here are two player aid cards, terrain effects chart, and attack summary, and here is a... All right, so undesirable. And I get it, it's a magazine, and, you know, but... This strategy map on the back of a display is not a great idea. So, set that aside for now. And here's the counter sheet. All right, so we have uh, the Waterloo game, which is up here. Here's your French. Here's your uh, Anglo-Allied army. Here's your Prussians. Um, so we have some what look like 5 8 inch counters plus some half-inch counters. These counter sheets have to be a bear to um, lay out every every issue. I mean, what what do these come out like once a year? That sounds about right. Okay, so here are your EC campaign stuff. Uh, these are for fields of fire. These are for when eagles fight, which I have. So probably replacement counters for that. Let me pull this out. Um. I don't know if those are extras or what. Uh, there's a Paths of Glory unit, which apparently fixes something. I don't see it. There's something for Planet Orange. There's some stuff for Pericles. There's some more stuff. I don't know what these things are. Oh, they look like they're events of some kind for Pericles. Stuff for Hoplite. Uh, stuff for Sardes. I don't know what that is. Here's some stuff for Unconditional Surrender. Here's the unit for Paths of Glory. Here's uh, Gallipoli 1916 stuff, which I don't own. Here's your Holland 44 counters. Stuff for Last Running Yards, Wilderness War Clash of Giants, 1770, 1777. Presumably that's Campaigns of 1777. It'll be funny to have this thick GMT brown core counter mixed in with the less thick white core counters that uh, Decision uses for the magazine games. Uh, so, uh, another value-packed um, issue. Uh, the magazines are expensive. They're about 45 bucks an issue. That's largely because of the, the, the inserts in general, not just the included game, but as you can see, there's, there's a whole pile of included inserts, counter sheets, play aids, scenarios, all that stuff. Um, this one has a little less stuff in it than the last issue, actually, but I've always found that C3i gives good value, um, especially if you're interested in the game that comes with the magazine. Then it, then it's clearly worth it. The magazine itself is also very good, though, too. So uh, this has been an unboxing or unsleeving of 
C3I number 33. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you would like to support Arbor Slayer, please share the videos around on the social media. And if you like, you can click on the Patreon link in the video description. Until next time, thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.